I think I'll do a quick little video here with my cell phone again. Um, if I ever won the lottery, this is probably what I would spend most of my time doing. Probably go out and, you know, ride around and get some exercise on a bicycle in the morning or go to the gym or something. Then I come and do this for about 8 or 10 hours a day or something like that. At least 4 or 5 days a week. It's, it's uh, pretty addictive. I love this stuff. Um, <clears throat> basically, this is my new design here. That's my new brain board. That's an old brain board. And that's actually um, all through whole stuff, done pretty compact, but I changed everything. And that, the reason this has to be so big is because all these connectors on here, um, if you look, they're actually locking connectors. The plan is to use this for the Nissan Leaf powertrain, which is going to run, open to run a fully charged battery at 470 volts. So if one of these connectors was to come off and, you know, not only the fact that it loses signals, but the fact that, you know, it could bounce around in there and short out on something, that's really bad news. Um, this is one of the power stage boards. It's got some probes on there and whatnot right now. As you can see, I put a 100 nanofarad cap to simulate the load of the IGBT gate itself. Um, <clears throat> this jumper wire right here goes to the high side source or high side common which is actually um i believe you call it a emitter i don't use igbt's very often and it connects over to the actual um gotta remember what i'm trying to do here connects over to the common of the the low side because when the igbt switches on it actually measures um it sends a current out to this pin um, got to remember because this will be basically be the positive essentially of the uh, power switch and then the common over here will be the negative and what it's trying to do is send a positive voltage over to the positive feed it through the switch while it's on and measure its voltage drop by doing that and what it does is when it hits 6.5 volts in the circuit that's with a Zener diode and another diode and a capacitor and whatnot there. Um, <clears throat> once it hits that 6.5 voltage threshold, it'll actually shut the drive down. And I can actually show that right now. So I go over here, I got my, got everything working. I'm really excited. I had a small issue where I had um, my capacitor for the main chip here, I had the wrong one in there. I. I'm stocking up on <laughs> surface mount stuff. As you can see, I got little through holes things kind of jumpered in there because I don't have, um, those are 2.2K resistors because I don't have any SMD 2.2 resistors right now. I have to probably put another $1 to $200 order in with DigiKey. Been buying them by the real because it's cheaper, but unfortunately, spent a lot of money lately and I got to do this on a budget. So anyways, we can go over here and and so far this is my first production run of these I'll, I'll mention that too the only problem i've found so far is the uh isolated power supplies i set the um the layout incorrectly basically i i put the offset the wrong direction of which where the pins go you can see it on these ones and that's why they're all leaning funny that's unfortunate but it does work it's just you know, I got to prove it to make sure it's worth all leaving all the rest of the stuff where it is and then just edit those on my schematic here and uh, probably do another order. Um, so we can go here, click F. You can hear it. I got it set at 12 kilohertz right now for PWM frequency and you can hear it. I don't know if that'll show up in the video, but there you can see it. This is hooked to common so that the negative of the, the, um, oscilloscope probe is hooked to common you can see it transitioning from a negative voltage through common up to and it ends up being actually like 13 and a half volts i have to work on a couple things there um probably putting a pretty good load on these isolated supplies so i have to have a little jumper resistor a 1k jumper resistor in there it's really hard to see but you can see it down here there, it might focus. There you go. You can see it there. I have to take that off and probably put a zener or something in there to try and uh, adjust the load. And what I found is I can adjust the voltage on the power supply input to those to get them to be within the proper voltage. Um, I 
thing a zener would be the way to go. I can set a fairly high one, like maybe a 17 volt zener just to keep things safe and then it doesn't have to load it down so much. Um, nonetheless, you can see it right there. Now I'm gonna unhook this wire right here, which basically, essentially, I'm gonna turn the camera on an angle. This will actually shut off or activate the desaturation detection. And you can see there it is. And what it's doing right now is it actually trying to turn back on. Here is, let's, uh, oh, let's do the cursor here. Go to YX. We'll slide this across. And we'll go here. This will show um, 18 kilohertz. I don't quite have it right. Let's put a freeze on that. And we'll just stop this because that's actually annoying on the ears. So I'm going to do some experimenting. I'll bring that down, <clears throat> move that over there. And so there's our 12, like 11.7, 12 kilohertz. So you can see the first time it turns on here, back here, it actually turns on. As soon as it gets turned on, it realizes, oh, desaturation shuts down. It waits this length of time, which is 32. Well, technically we got to measure from the start of the switch. So we can just zoom this out a bit. Um, bring that over. Again, this is because it's trying to protect itself. So it's basically going 32.4 microseconds and then trying again. So basically the wait period is actually from when I believe either when it shuts it down or when it measures, it's actually fully off. So it's one or the other. So that's pretty cool. It goes from there to there and then tries again. So now I'm going to actually have a signal which I don't know if it's active right now. I got to think about that. But I actually have a signal going through the ribbon cable as a fault signal, which actually goes to another little transistor, which turns on the reset pin on my main brain board. Once that works, this thing will probably actually kick out of the setup mode and it'll actually trigger one of those lights and then it'll give up and it'll only do it once. So this is actually a good test. So for some reason, that's not actually working. I'll figure that out later. But that doesn't matter. This this is what really matters. This would be essentially saving one of my IGBTs. This is one of my test ones that I'm going to be hooking up, hopefully in the next few days. And I've done the math at 1600 amps and 470 volts. If this thing shorted out, that's 1,008 horsepower worth of electricity. It's going to shoot through there for for a very small period of time. We would probably be talking. It would get turned on. Let's come on it would probably be turned on somewhere around there bring this back over and it would be on for around 2.4 microseconds so you know it's not a big deal but it's incredible to think that you can put that much amperage and voltage like wattage essentially dump through this it's going to short out it's going to sense that here it's going to shut it off and i will test that right now i have a zener diode that's a little higher value on there because that'll actually shut it down around 400 amps according to my calculations. And I figured that's the safe way to do it is start around three, 400 amps. I think that's what it is off the look, but I took, I chose the biggest one possible anyway. Um, nonetheless, that'll be really cool. And then it, it'll wait and it'll try again and it'll probably be able to just repeatedly pulse that and then keep getting pissed off and shutting itself down. So um, nonetheless, that's a good feature of this. That's going to actually make these things basically bulletproof. Um, almost. <laughs> Let's just turn this back on one more time. <clears throat> and I just want to hook this back up if we can here. Gotta be careful. Don't want to short junk out. Okay, I got it working. I'm just going to push the button. There's one other thing I want to show. You can actually see here <clears throat> the two step turn off, which is actually really cool trying to make a fairly good video it's a little tricky to hold a cell phone eventually i'll get a better camera for this stuff just got my wife one for christmas a pretty good deal but i don't know if i'm allowed to use it for a while so usually she doesn't like me wrecking her stuff doing this but nonetheless uh let's zoom in here <clears throat> you can actually see there it is the two-step turn off and that's this little bump right down in the bottom it's so what it's actually doing is it's actually turning off for this length of time here somewhere around there and like remember this is actually 
pulling it down with a negative voltage. So it's pulling it way off. Like it's actually shut off somewhere around here, but it's pulling it with a negative voltage. Then this senses the actual little driver chip, the little white thing there, actually senses when the voltage is low enough. And then it activates this transistor, which is on both sides. This is So this is the high side and this one's the low side. Activates this transistor and that actually clamps it with no resistors. So this transition here actually goes through a set of three one ohm resistors to slowly turn it off. Then when it senses it's low enough, it hits this transistor and shuts it down, shorts it out essentially. And that part right there between the negative turn off and that part, those are crucial steps for high voltage, high amperage switching like this. You need to hold those things shut off. That's actually to shut this off and hold it off as hard as you can so you can switch the other side on as fast as possible without getting any ringing. If you switch the other side on too fast without those two features or at least one of those two features, it'll actually turn this side back on accidentally and it'll create a passer. And that's that's where the desaturation would probably hopefully save you. But unfortunately, the whole damn thing just wouldn't run because of that reason. <clears throat> just to show you, this is actually... Got a little bit of stuff laying here right now. This is actually the basic idea where all the IGBTs will be switching. So hopefully this will be working soon, soon enough anyway. Oh, and if anybody knows what the hell this thing is, I think I might be able to use it for something. Thanks.